Good evening, uh, my fellow student, and I am really uh, glad that uh, the survival school came to be. And I would like to share something to you, in which uh, Pastor Hector, our senior pastor, when we first met in my first year over here, uh, actually, uh, I don't expect really that I will be part of this uh, Bible Institute. When Pastor uh, Noni, who is now the associate pastor of our senior pastor, when I met him, he said to me, uh, you want to uh, do some voluntary job in uh, like helping uh, uh, some construction in a church. And he asked me, uh, you go to church? Yeah. But before, I'm not really that active in church. And I share something to him that I, you know, when I was young, uh, back in the Philippines, our house is near a uh, church, a small chapel, a chapel church. And I used to go over there. I became a sacristan, serving the priest. Uh, you know, uh, when they uh, held the Mass, uh, you were there, you know, holding his key and like that. And then my father uh, told my mother, maybe Ephraim can become a priest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so anyway, to make my story short, my father was assigned back in summer uh, to become a school superintendent of the trade school over there. And he brought me over there. I'm from Luzon, so I went to the summer with a Bisaya place. I don't understand any language over there because the language is a desire and I uh, speak to God. And then he told me to go over there and have a vacation, but I found out he's already talking to the rector of the seminary. And I was interviewed, take some examination, and I pass it. Let's go and uh, the first time I went over here, I'm really uh, well versed about Pentecostal uh, doctrine. So when I went over here for the first time, I heard those people speaking in tongues. So I said, what's this? <laughs> well, uh, and then I started looking at the Bible, and then this gift was there. So I said, well. Wow. So I became interested, actually. And then Pastor Hector, while we're doing our uh, work there in Lucinda, uh, we're doing some work over here because uh, Pastor Noni told me, okay, let's have Pastor Hector to build up the church. Because actually, uh, the condition of the church is not like this before. Since you don't have any values in you, can you uh, just look at the church? You see, like a. Uh, maybe I can call myself the first custodian of this church under Pastor Hector. So I sleep in the car for the, for the first month because I cannot commit to him to be a custodian in this church because I have my own agenda. I told him I will stay only in LA for a very short time. So I start talking about, uh, because I came from the uh, farm, do some research over there. And this piece that I am talking about, Pastor Hector, is the piece that was served by Jesus Christ of the multitude. See, this is the feast that St. Peter is feasting in the Sea of Galilee, and this is Tilapia. Well, this is what I am doing uh, back in the farm. And then Pastor Hector told me, okay, forget about this thing that you're talking about. First, learn about Jesus Christ. So I said, okay. Then now, and finally I accepted to be a custodian, so I entered the hall at the uh, our hall over there, and you know, one of the room over there I'm staying. You can, it's a bodega actually, so you cannot even find me there because there's so much uh, trust that's over there. And then Pastor Ronnie and me started helping in uh, reclaiming room by room. And then Pastor Hector told me about his vision about this church. That is, we're just having this kind of lands, castle thing. And he's talking about, you know, I'm into, I have this kind of vision that someday there will be a lot of pastors over here. That 
there will be a school, like a Bible school. Because he even asked me, Ephraim, do you want to attend the Bible school in LA? You'll pay the tuition fee. I said, uh, later, later. And then finally it came into being that this Bible school is now in existence. And I am so happy to be part of the Bibles. Actually, you guys are really part of the cream of the crop. We have to sacrifice because this thing that we started, we have to finish it. And the vision of our pastor, he called me the big brother. Sometimes I really, uh, he cannot understand me sometimes. You know, we have some differences in life that we class. However, like Pastor Noni, it's also uh, sometimes uh, we cannot understand Pastor Hector. If you will know Pastor Hector before, four years ago, he is totally becoming better and better now. Totally a different person. And like Pastor Hector said, that I'm a different person also, unlike before. Because we're trying to push our own agenda. So we, once you push your own agenda, nothing will happen. It's like you serve. If you're going to push your own agenda, you cannot serve that. See? And when I'm looking in this, uh, in our school, it says Los Angeles Ministerial Bible School, lungs. And what is lung? It is the sacrificial animal that, you know, the chosen people is sacrificing to that, to get something. Because a lot of people think, when you sacrifice something, you lose, you know, it's like, why I have sacrificed my life for this guy? Why are you doing it? Because you know that you're doing it for the sake of what? Gaining some consideration also. And you sacrifice sometimes, you give something, you give up something that you value most. Like for example last year. Going here in the fall of the night, we're sacrificing. And some are not here because they're sick. But we have to go on. See? And if we, if you people, especially the young, young students of this school, I'm looking forward that you will be the first pastors that under Pastor Hector is dreaming about. You will start something that is beautiful. Because we started something over already that we know is beautiful. That, you know, uh, I was looking at the scripture. They say prophecy. When you prophesy something, there is what they call short part prophecy and a long prophecy. Our vision before, maybe we can call a short prophecy. And it's not fulfilled. We have our Bible school. Pastors are coming here. We're not even inviting them. They come here, and you know what? When I was trying to uh, remember those those days, I'm telling myself, I was laughing. Pastor Hector us is talking about having a Bible school, and how many people he got? Not even 30. See? Sometime back, uh, one of our uh, uh, members, so it's already up here, and I was there taking the fact, the, uh, the video, and she's asking me, are we, when are we going to start? I said, you can start now, there are no more people. It's all about us. When we pass the 50 attendance, we're so happy. And now, 100 from 30 it tripled, or actually it tripled. And when, I'm so happy that uh, for four years, I've been part of this. And a lot of people don't know. And when I came here, uh, what I see only here is in remembrance of me, of what? This thing is not here. So, Pastor Hector said, okay, I pray, can you put back the sign of four square church. 
what really stands for. Like Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. But I said, okay. So we start shopping, looking for some uh, letters. And then uh, I said, okay. Uh, we can make, uh, because I, I would like to uh, make the, uh, the thing like something that's really special. So I said, okay, I'm going to carve it one by one, out of labor. So I sacrifice for each letter that we have over there to do it. Then I started making the cross. And most of the members are even laughing at me, saying, what are you doing? I'm going to make a cross in front. And those members, I, I found out, they don't, they don't know, they don't have a cross in there. That the cross over there that they know fell down already. So they're not, they're not observing. So Pastor Hector said, what kind of cross are you going to put? How big it is? I said, okay. He, I was thinking, they're asking how big the cross is. I said, okay, it will be 12 feet by 8 feet. I can put somebody there and crucify him. <laughs> well, anyway. So, the sacrifices that we're making now is what? We're seeing it, the fruit of our labor. And, this, and the fruit of our labor is like, it takes a long time before you can see the fruit. It's like you. So, the sacrifices that we're making Trying to be what? Soldier of God. Because we will be the frontliner in really evangelizing the Word of God. So I would, like, I would like to share something to you that 12 years ago, this was shared to me by my friend who is a Korean. He's a Christian. And we're doing something really crazy. And because of faith, we try to do something that's really, for everybody, it's really crazy. Actually, this uh, story is about a. Uh, actually, this was the one who wrote it is anonymous, and they say this is the one of the sermon of the preacher. And this story is about this deck of cards. I would like to uh, show something to you because a lot of people sometimes judge people because of what they're doing, and this young soldier. Okay, who was in the back house all alone on one Sunday morning. It was quiet that day. The gun and the mortars and landmines, for some reason, hadn't made a noise. This young soldier knew it was Sunday, the holiest day of the week. He was sitting there. He got out. He got something in his hand. And this is the deck of cards. and laid them across his back. And then, there's an army sergeant who came in and asked, why aren't you with the rest of the platoon? The soldier replied, I thought I would stay behind and spend some time with the Lord. The sergeant said, looks like you're going to play a deck of cards, a card, because you have a deck of cards. The soldier said, no, sir. Since we are allowed to have Bibles or other spiritual books in this country, I decided to talk to the Lord by studying this step of card. Wow, that's really heavy. Okay. And then this young soldier started to show to the sergeant, and the sergeant in disbelief said, How are you, you have to do a lot of explaining to me? And then, this young soldier started showing something to this sergeant. He said, you see, sir, when I look at the AIDS, it reminds me that there is only one God, the God that created heaven and earth. And when I see the two, it represents the two parts of the Bible, the Old Testament and the New Testament. And when I see the three, it reminds me of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And the four, 
stands for the four evangelists who wrote the Bible. They are Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And when they see the five, it reminds, reminds me of the five virgins. There were ten, but only five of them were glorified. And when I see the six, it reminds me that God created heaven and earth in six days. And on the seventh, He rested, and that is the Sabbath day. And when I see the eight, it reminds me of Noah and his wife and his three sons and their wives. These are the eight righteous people that were saved by God when he, what, made the great flood and this is the first time that God destroyed the earth. And when I see the nine, it reminds me of the lepers. There are nine of them, there are ten of them, and nine did not even give thanks to Jesus. And when I see the ten, it represents the Ten Commandments that was God gave to Moses on the tablet of stone. And when I see the jack, it's a reminder of Satan, of God, first angel, that he got kicked out of heaven for his lying wicked ways and is now the joker of eternal hell. And when I see the queen, it stands for the Virgin Mary. And when I see, I see the king, stands for Jesus, for he is the king of all kings. Wow, amazing, right? But what really struck me about this uh, story is about when this soldier started to continue what he's saying to this uh, servant, he said that when I count the number of dots in this deck of cards, I count it 365 days. We see uh, 365 dots, which is the 365 days in a year. And this deck of cards is 52 cards. This is the what? Numbers of weeks in a year. And there are four suits of this card. Which what? Represents the four seasons in a year. Which are the spring, summer, fall, and winter. And each suit contains 13 parts. These are exactly 13 weeks in a quarter. So what really struck me about this type of part, the way it was explained, is really amazing. You cannot deny that it's the truth for thing. It's like the Bible, this is the truth. And so, this young soldier said to the sergeant, So when I talk to God, all I have to do is have this own deck of cards. And the sergeant just stood there after a minute with tears in, in his eyes and pain in his heart. He said to this young soldier, Can I borrow the deck of cards? Well, for us, these sacrifices, like a soldier who will sacrifice his life for his country, for us, we are sacrificing something for our Christian life. And this sacrifice that we're going to do is a living sacrifice in which ourselves, by accepting Jesus Christ, will be now the center of our life. And for us, a lot of us over here already started really putting aside themselves and putting Jesus Christ as the center of your life. And I hope that most of us over here will finish this race. <laughs> because when, when God tested Abraham by sacrificing his only son that was promised by God, to be given to them. And it took him 100 years to have Isaac. And then God asked him to sacrifice his own son. What? That's really what we call a total sacrifice. Only son, you waited for so many years, 100 years, and then God will ask you to sacrifice your own son. 
but because Abraham had this faith in this one God. And he said, well, I'll do it. So he was obedient. Even though he really loved his son, he is obedient to God and had faith in God. And by that time on, God said to Abraham, well, uh, you have shown your uh, faith in me and you don't have to sacrifice your son. However, God, because out of love for us, because we are sinful, sacrifice, a perfect sacrifice, and that is what? His only son, the perfect lamb. And being perfect, he was able to redeem us from our weakness. That's a, really a sacrifice that even the devil cannot offer to us. However, for us to be back again, to be with God, our salvation lies in our faith. And that faith can only be, uh, can only be uh, fulfilled by accepting Jesus Christ. And I hope we're going to finish our our journey because our salvation, as what Pastor Bernadette said, is a long journey. And we're just starting this uh, journey for us to uh, because it's what Pastor said every now and then. The face of God is shining in this place. And I hope you can see it. Because I have seen it. Thank you. Let us pray. God the Father, we glorify your name. We bless you. And for my fellow students, we are uh, really blessed that you have given us the opportunity to serve you.